in this short uh, overview, I want to give you a brief introduction to some of the machine learning concepts that we use in the Oracle machine learning tutorial based on the Alpha Office scenario. I'm going to cover three things, a quick overview of machine learning itself, a quick overview of one particular technique, there are many, but one particular technique that we use in this uh, workshop called classification. And then finally, because you don't use techniques, you actually use algorithms to solve problems. Uh, I'm going to talk about the decision trees algorithm, which is the one that we use uh, to classify credit for our particular customers. Have you ever had one of these things happen to you? You've had a credit card transaction declined, or you get a personalized email or, or web ad. Machine learning is behind all of these things, looking at patterns in data and trying to figure out, is this a good credit card transaction? Uh, is this what's the right advert to serve to this customer and so on? Let's look at an analogy. Supposing that you today were trying to learn to ride a bicycle for the very first time. You could take the approach of reading all the books on physics about inertia and gyroscopes and momentum and friction and so on. And use all of that to understand how a bike might work. Give yourself some rules to do it uh, and then get off on the bike and ride away. But that's not how we learn complex problems like that. We actually look at the data, we learn from experience. You'd get on the bike, you'd experiment, you'd see what happened, and you'd learn from that. Machine learning is very much analogous to that approach. Only instead of human beings looking at uh, activities, here we have an algorithm that is not a, a specific algorithm coded for a particular problem, but a general purpose algorithm that can look at a particular set of data uh, and from that pull out some patterns to help it solve problems and predict things uh, that solve problems for you. So another way to look at it is to think about what we could do if we're trying to work with customer data. You could do a simple query to pull information out of a data store that gave you age or marketing preferences for all of your customers. You could do simple analytics to understand how much money they'd spent with you in the last three to 12 months. And machine learning could do much more complex analytics. It could group them into particular behavioral segments. Or in the case of this workshop, it could group them according to their credit. Is it good for a particular pro product that we're trying to sell or is it not appropriate? Now the way we actually make predictions about customer credit in this particular scenario is because we have an existing set of customers with existing information about their credit suitability. And we use machine learning uh, classification techniques to look at that data and understand what the patterns are and be able to use that understanding to make predictions in the future. Let's take a look at how classification as a general technique actually works. And we're going to do this by taking a totally non-technical, non-computer example, uh, that of working pretending to classify fruit and learn to classify fruit. And after I've done this on the next slide, I'm gonna map all the things we do here to a more technical machine learning process. So I want you to imagine again, this time that you've never seen fruit. You're learning about fruit for the very first time. And in front of you, I'm standing with this very large basket of fruit. Uh, and I've got examples of all these different kinds of fruits in there. And I pass a lot of that stuff out to you. Each time though I, I give you a, an apple or a, a lime, it comes with a label. Basically, I'm telling you what the answer is. I'm saying, here's an apple, here's another apple. Use all these apples to learn what it is that makes an apple an apple, as opposed to a strawberry or a lime or a banana. Now, after I've given you enough of these fruits, you probably have built a good model in your head of, of what it is that makes these different fruits unique and individual. And at this point, I'm gonna try and test you to see how good you are. Because I didn't give you all the apples and, and all the fruits in my basket, I actually kept some of it back, 20 to 30% of the basket. And so I keep that stuff that I reserved and I pass it out to you. This time I don't tell you what it is. I say, you tell me what it is. And I can test you to see how good you are, to see how good the model is that you developed in your brain is at recognizing fruit. Now let's assume that you've passed that test with flying colors. Um, you're ready for the most important stage, which is going to work. Any machine learning projects that fail, fail at this stage. You can build something useful, but until it actually goes and is placed into production and changes the way you operate your business, then it's not delivering any value to the organization. So in this fruit classification example, I'm gonna put you to work in my fruit sorting factory. There's fruit coming past you on the conveyor belt. You can recognize these four kinds of fruit, grab the piece of fruit that you see and put it in the appropriate box. And one more thing though that, that might happen, over time, things are gonna change. Perhaps I get a different supplier of fruit. Uh, perhaps the bananas change shape um, perhaps I decide to introduce new fruits to the equation. I'm going to add guavas to my, my empire. 
in which case we need to bring you back into the organization and retrain you and, and give you a little bit more information about how to handle, I give you some more examples really of, of guavas and learn how to handle those different fruits. So that's a very non-technical example, but let's translate this to machine learning terms. We used a, a technique called classification to classify those different kinds of fruits. And there are many machine learning techniques, including classification and clustering and time series analysis and more. But of course, the work isn't done by a very specific or by a general technique, it's done by a specific algorithm. In this particular case, uh, we were using your brain. So I guess we could call that a, a deep learning neural network that's running in your brain. Uh, data scientists might use neural networks and software uh, and other algorithms like decision trees or k-means clustering. And there's many more, hundreds of them. All machine learning requires training data and you started off with the initial basket of fruit. Um, for this workshop, you actually have some data sets that were supplied to you for the exercise, and those will, will often be supplied by IT, and maybe the data scientist is responsible for setup and cleanup and, and working with that data to get it ready to model. Of course, training the model is that was one of the core, core things that you do. You just looked at the stuff and figured it out, and I, it's hard to explain how the brain works. But in, in a machine learning sense, algorithms would adjust parameters and, and tweak the way they look at the data and split the data in different ways in order to make their responses more accurate. You always test the model that you built. And you test it with data that it hasn't seen. So here we use the leftover fruit. You always, always will reserve data from your training sets to make sure that you can apply some additional data to the model to test it to see how accurate it is on data that it hasn't already seen. Some models can give very accurate responses, but won't generalize to new data. Most critical thing, perhaps, model deployment. Make sure it gets put to work. I sent you to the fruit packing line. Here you'd want to make sure that your models are available to application developers, to business executives, to analysts and the tools that they use are not just available, but they're actually used and they change the way that business happens in a positive way. Finally, I talked briefly about model updating when I added a new fruit to my empire, uh, brought you back for more training to update your model. This is a process that happens very much all the time with machine learning models. The world changes, the world evolves, uh, data changes. Uh, and so very often you need to bring models back, you need to monitor them, understand how they're performing, or retrain them or build a new model in order to take account of new circumstances. Let's take a look now, if that's the, the general technique of classification, let's take a look at this specific algorithm called decision trees. We've encountered decision trees in real life already. Perhaps you've played the game 20 questions where somebody comes up with a thing and you've got to guess what it is and you ask them a series of more detailed questions trying to narrow down to find the right answer. That's a decision tree. Or maybe you've called a large company and you've had to push numeral, a large number of different buttons in order to get through to the right individual. Again, that's a decision tree process where they ask you questions and ask you to, to push a particular button. In computer terms, how does that translate? Well, supposing we're trying to predict customer churn. I've got a very simple data set here. It's got just five columns, five attributes. I will assume I'm a large company, so there's many, many rows, but this is what the data looks like. Only three of those are useful as predictors. Customer ID is a unique number for every customer, not much help in a prediction algorithm. And the last column there, churn, that's the label. That's like the label that says apple on the side of the piece of fruit. Um, so that tells me has that customer churned or not. We can look at that set of customers, look at their age, income, and gender, and see if we can actually pull out from that data a pattern that would indicate when somebody might churn. And this is what it might look like. Here's a simple decision tree based on a, a small a data set of 1,274 totally made up customers uh, with those three uh, interesting, potentially interesting predictors. Um, here you can see that we, what the algorithm is doing is looking at the data set and splitting it in some way and trying ideally to split it into equal halves, but that doesn't always happen. It's trying to split and narrow down so we can look at different groups of customers and say, those ones are likely to churn, those ones aren't. Now this particular system or this diagram shows me what the split was done on for the most part income, um, but it doesn't actually tell me what the income split is. So I've given some labels so to point to the individual nodes and you can see, for example, that node four uh, shows that uh, there's a prediction that customers in that grouping with that income range of 41 and a half to 89 and a half thousand dollars, 64% confidence these guys are gonna churn uh, and that's supported by over half of the data set. So, an interesting and useful node there. If you'd like more background on this, I've given a link at the bottom to a blog article uh, that will actually explain this whole scenario in more detail. 
with that, thank you. I hope that, that helps a little bit with the concepts you're going to use in the OML workshop and good luck with the exercise.